I am Chippa Khan, the host of Changing Times, Changing Worlds uh, Wednesday night podcast, uh, Otherworldly. And tonight I'm going to be talking about numerology, which is one of those little bits of divination that kind of hangs around on the edges of a whole lot of other things. And if you do tarot or if you do astrology or if you do almost anything, the, the numbers creep in because numbers are everywhere. So if you want to, if you've never done it and you want to find out what your numbers are and what they mean, grab a pencil or a paper or you can, um, if you get interested, and you, you can do look it on YouTube later and, and get your pencil and paper then. Well, um, well as a dysnumeric dyslexic, this should prove interesting. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, this is basically numerology is a form of divination, and I consider almost every type of divination pattern noticing so that you can see what's coming. I personally tend to use the Chaldean rather than the uh, Pythagorean system. Uh, Pythagoras was considered the father of numerology as well as mathematics. I like beans too much to ascribe to Pythagoras. And music and, uh, and a lot of other things. He was, um, he, he, he discovered the musical scale and stuff. And, and now they, they say, oh yes, well the numerology, there is no sacred meaning to the numbers. There is only math. And, uh, but the basic thing that for numerology is every number has a meaning. And this is a little bit closer. This is the Chaldean one. It's when I put on the uh, announcement for the event and it only goes one through eight. Now, the reason for that is when you are working through, even though the numbers one through nine have meanings, the, uh, the way you get your number is to find <coughs> out where your, let's see, I should be looking at me right now. Uh, you, the, um, you, you put your That's name exactly underneath good. the numbers, and that should and that is uh, allows you to pick your name. I'm going to, if with your nope. kind permission, Sean, I will use you as an example. No problem. And nope. we will go for Sean Kane. And if we nope. use the Pythagorean system, we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we put the alphabet under it. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. I should have written this up before. And I, now, of course, I have to... They, one of the reasons I don't think much about uh, of this one is because Pythagoras was almost certainly you're doing his numbers in Greek. I don't know if the uh, Arabic numbers were yet. I just have this horrible image of people trying to use Roman numerals. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but several of the letters that we have now didn't exist then. So, oh, I know, I uh, should be, here, let's put it on there. That's better. So, huh? but, but the, when it comes to divination, you always work with the culture that is current. So since this is our current number, this is, uh, and letter system, this is what they use. So what we do is we say, so an S is a one, and a E is a five, uh, A is one, that's easy, five, mm -hmm. 
k is two, one, another five, and another, e is five, there. Okay, so we have, that's interesting because uh, anytime well, you have pumps, just, just as in tarot, if you have a lot of something, you pay more attention to it. So we add those up. So one and five is six, and one is seven. Seven and five is 12. Uh, 12, uh, 12 and two is 14, 15. And I'm gonna group those, make it easier, 25. So we add those together, you got 25, and you add the two and the five together, and they you become seven. seven. So your name is a seven, which ha says that you are um, a spiritual, you are more likely to be psychic, you are, tend to be a teacher, uh, you are a thinker, you're analytical, you're philosophical. These are, these are the aspects of seven learning, wisdom, understanding, observation. You're known as the intellectual intuitive. And if you have a uh, downside of, of seven, if a seven has a downside, uh, it's, they can get too picky because they can spot errors. So that is, that is one of the things that one does with that, that, that is going to be your basic number for your, it, it, this one <coughs> is called your destiny number. Um, okay. Unless that, unless, was that what was on your birth certificate? Um, can I think about having looked at my birth certificate recently, there's an M in there for Malcolm. Remember, I have about a dozen oh, so middle names, we... only, only one of which I normally use. Okay. Well, if you or use you one want... that's what, how you're going to present. But for your destiny number, uh, Why we should have that... Malcolm in there. Why don't you use Star Wolf instead? Let's try what, and see how Star Wolf comes out. S-T-A-R-W-O-L-F. We got a one. And T is two. And one, and R is nine, and W is five. Oh, it's another five, uh, six, and three, and F is six. Okay, Star Wolf. So we we'll go three, four, four plus nine is uh, thirteen. Thirteen uh, plus five is. 18. Uh, yeah, plus six. 24. 20, 27, and six is 33. Ooh, you're at 33? Coolness. Um, I'm sorry, 33 is, is the master teacher, the influencer. Uh, there are okay. usually what you do, is, and it, it, it kind of takes you down to- For God's uh, sake, I couldn't hear anything. Which it reduces to a six, but when you have 11, 22, or 33, those are master numbers, and therefore you pay attention to them and don't, uh, and even if you reduce them, you don't reduce them, you bear in mind that you hit one of those master numbers. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I find numerology. So it, it mostly works, but I find it irritating that it works because it's so silly. <laughs> um, yeah. But, uh, oh dear, I'm going to mute myself and get rid of somebody. Okay. Anyway, um, so somehow I am not surprised that, that you have you were at 33. Uh, I was kind of hoping somebody would. So that is, but so that would be your, your, your use name. So that's cool. 
Yeah, um, that's what I tend. That's what I tend to think about myself, and prefer people call me. Yeah, I've often said said Sean Kane is just for work and uh, signing my paycheck. Same, same with Chippecon. So Yeah. Now, if you want to reduce that to a six, it is the loyal, responsible, loving, harmonious family person. Ah! So Just ask anybody in my family. The 33 does seem to resonate more. I think Star Wolf is more likely to be a 33. Yeah. But, okay, now we can have a little bit more fun. Because there are other numbers. For instance, there is your soul number. And your soul uh, or your heart's desire number is just the, do, should we use Star Wolf or should we use Sean K? Let's go use Star Wolf. Let's use it's Star just, Wolf. That's what I. Is just the, um, the, the vowel. So, no, S is not. It's so just the A, there's a one there, and the O. And there's a six. So it's a s seven, puts you right back up to the seven, which I described before. Okay. So then we, we can go for, gee, what a surprise. Your personality number is the consonants. So that the, is the one, the, the one and two is three. And nine is 12, uh, and five is 17, and uh, L, uh, and three is 20, and six is uh, 26, which add together and become eight. Okay, your personality number is eight, which is going to be a little bit different. Um, going back to um, the the uh, what an eight is is um, has to do with it. I learned it as it it can go either of two ways. It's power. It's a lot of power, but it embraces extremes. So you could be an ascetic, or you could be a total hedonist. You could, but it, it's very much about the power and freedom. And it, it usually is very successful. Uh, it's often known as the executive. Uh, and that, so that is your, your outer personality. The way people see you is as a powerful person. Your inner personality is the, uh, ascended teacher, the, the, the master teacher. Um, so that is, and then when you put them all together, you've got the 33. So my goodness gracious. So your, your, uh, your name I believe there. The term is, I believe the term is great googly moogly. Yeah, well, I'm hardly surprised with that. But then the next thing that you do that, so that, that's your destiny number. I mean, it's the names that get to me. Uh, the, uh, you know, the, it, it, there is, uh, there is the life path, um, uh, is, is the next thing that, that is usually mentioned is your birth date. So what, what day were you born is supposed to give you your birth number or your life path. Day, okay. Whereas your de destiny number is also called your expression number, which I find a lot easier to deal with, and your fate number. Uh, it well, is supposed it, to be your original name as it appears on your birth certificate. Okay, fine. Let's go back to two or three hundred years before they had birth certificates. Uh, so was it that, that on the, uh, if you're a Northern European, it would probably be what, what was written down in the parish records of the family Bible. Mm -hmm. You go back before that, or you go to any culture where there isn't a, um, a, a uh, record kept of the, it, it would probably be what was announced when you were born. And so uh, to, when you were introduced to the community. So 
a lot of this is based on we're going with the current culture that we have now and we're, we're going to accept it. Now, I'd like to, actually, I'm going to um, show you, let, let's lose, use you again, unless somebody else would like to be a guinea pig. Bill, would you like to uh, have, have me look at your name? Okay. Okay. Pig. Okay, then, then I wouldn't uh, mind either. I mean, I mean, not, no, no, I, I, and, and this is, I am going to talk name again because I am going to use the Chaldean thing. Now that I like this, I think it was in hmm. um, the Black Arts by Richard Cavendish. No, that was, no, it was in. Um, I had tried numerology two or three times when I was a teenager, and then I found this book that had the Chaldean one, and it never seemed to get me right. But the minute I went to to this, it suddenly started working, and it made sense to me because if you take it when you're doing any of that adding up, if you add nine in, <coughs> it, gets, it it goes away. So what is the freaking point of putting the nine in anyway? Also, mm -hmm. they didn't have J's, they didn't have X's, they didn't have G's, and they didn't have Y's. And in the Pythagorean, in the modern Pythagorean, you have to decide by looking at the name and how it's written, whether you're counting the Y as, as a vowel or as a uh, consonant, depending on how it's being used. Well, my goodness gracious. Flexible, isn't it? Yeah, oh, <laughs> I'm thinking um, if you're if you're using Greek, yeah, the J would be substituted for an I would substitute for the J, a K would substitute for the C. Yeah, I'm going back to my Latin from high school. Yeah, and it worked with the Latin. So, so let us, Bill. What what would your birth certificate name be? Okay, the legal name thing. is William Lee Linden. Okay, we're going to use William, what, William what, Lyndon? Lee. I, I didn't, I'm still a little deaf. L-E-E, -E, named after my uncle, who was named after my great-great-grandfather, the original William Lee. Oh, go, oh, Lee, as in, the, it, in all those, those Lees in Virginia. Yes, no relation. Thankfully. Okay, so you're more respectful, respectable than that. Okay, so using the the Chaldean, we'll go double. The W is a six, which unsurprisingly is the same characters as the U and the V. So we do you have any U's and V's now? Okay, the I is a one, G, again, no big surprise. The L is a three. We got two threes here. Another I. The A is a one. The M is a four. The L is another three. E's are fives. L is another three. That's another one. Uh, N is another five. D is four, another five. And the N is another five. So if we look at this, we're gonna, the immediate thought is, <coughs> well, okay, I'm, I cannot resist. We're going to get to, th this is a Pythagorean trick. Uh, you, you chart it. We got one, uh, six, one, one, a three, <coughs> three, a one, a one, a four, another three, a five, a 
a five, another three, another one, another five. And I have to squeeze those in a little bit more. Five. Okay, here's a four. So we got two fours and two more fives. Okay, when you're using this system, you make this uh, basically, uh, what's it called, an octothorpe? The pedal yeah, is the typography name, yes. And then you put in the numbers as they come up, and when you get more of them, you know, clearly, if, if there was going to be, you know, there's no twos, there's no nines, there's no eights, there's no sevens. The fact that you have no sevens means that you have uh, seven, eights, or nines. This creates the arrow. Any place you have, um, th this is the arrow of, um, oh, let's see, uh, seven, eight, nine, is this is the arrow of hesitation. Whereas this one, when you have three in a row, anytime you've got three in a row, whether it's diagonally up or down, it, it becomes an arrow. And so that arrow, the four, the four, five, six arrow is uh, four, five, six, I knew it's in there, yeah, is the arrow of the will. So will has the arrow, arrow of the will and the arrow of hesitation, which indicates that you have um, a challenge in the area of second guessing yourself and you have a very strong ability to concentrate. But then this cluster of threes, this cluster of uh, uh, once it, look a doubling of the fours is significant, but having four ones and five fives is amazing. So, um, and then again, we can do we can do the same. What, what's that? What I lost in the book of the law. I talked to the Oh, can't hear you. Okay, so the the soul numbers, we got the soul, we've got the one, two, three, five, five, one, five. So one, two, three, uh, 13, 14, 19, 19 goes back down to um, one. So your soul is your soul number is one and your consonant your your uh, personality number is let's see six three three uh, m is four L. yeah i just wrote them down so three Three, five, four, five. So six, nine, twelve, sixteen, nineteen, twenty-two, twenty-seven, thirty-one, uh, thirty-six. Added together, three and six is nine. Okay, so your your personality number is nine. And nine, as we see in my clever little chart. Oh, I should, I'm sorry, I should have switched it back to the uh, come on, there we go. Nine, oh, well, I guess you can't see it there, but there you go. This is compassion, universal love, completion, <coughs> and the common good. Um, so that is is how we take your your name apart we do the total i don't know if we did the entire total did we 
I think I got distracted by seeing all of those uh, <coughs> multiplied numbers. So six and one is seven, 10, 13, 14, 15, 19, 22, 32, uh, 35, 36, uh, 41, 45, uh, 55, and five and five is 10, which makes it one. So your personality, your, 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 uh, your destiny it comes to 55, yet more fives, which reduces to a one. And so you're, you're one of the movers and shakers. It, you've got a lot of uh, self-reliance, originality, and discipline. Your handicaps can, be, can manifest as being too bossy, and maybe too self-centered. Uh, you probably want to, your ones are often reformers. They want to fix things that, that, are, that they see are, are not being done properly. Um, and I should probably just run through the, uh, but anyway, I, I just enjoy making the little charts. Oh, I, I shouldn't do that yet because, wait a minute, what was the four? You got one four. No, it was two fours, you had two fours. Two fours, yeah. Two fours and no, nothing in the last column. I'll leave that for later because I do want to get into to, to that uh, because that's, that's kind of fun too. Um, but I probably should just run through the various numbers in case anybody is taking notes not that it probably wouldn't be a lot more efficient for you to go out and spend 10 bucks on a paperback on numerology but in case this is your only source of information on number on numerology number one has to do with beginnings singles self creation Got my little thing here. I've got another. Uh, doesn't make any difference what size up they are. One is a point. Two has two points, and so therefore it becomes a line. You get three, and you get a triangle. Four becomes a square. Five becomes a pentagon. Six a hexagon. Seven a heptagon. Yeah, eight an octagon, and nine a. Um, I remember that name. Uh, it's nonagon. Uh, nonagon, and if you have a nine in that, and you see, I I did put the the um, the star the the star uh, the the uh, Moravian star in the eight, and the uh, star of David in the six, and the fairy star in the uh, in the uh, seven. But when it came down to the, the nine points, uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't going to mess with that. <laughs> so, but there is, there is one, and that is a, apparently called the a Star of Goliath. And the Baha'i also use it as a symbol. So, But getting back to one, one is one, it, and all alone and everyone shall be so, which is why you get independence and leadership. Uh, out of it. It is associated... And all I can think of is the 60s tune. Yeah. It is associated with um, the point. It is associated with the root chakra. I think that would probably be the... Um, uh, I think it was Gretchen Shork who may have said that anytime you have four of anything, a ceremonial magician will, will start associating it with the four elements. Uh, oh, hi, Jenny. Um, and, but you have one and, and it is associated with the root chakra, which I think means that it is associated with red and the musical note C. Now I know the musical note goes straight back to Pythagoras. The red uh, and the chakras, I don't think that Pythagoras was big into that. But 
but who knows? I haven't studied much Pythagoras. Uh, two is for balance, uh, re receptivity. You get two things. I mean, gee, you've got one that's active and one that's passive, one that, that is projective and one that is uh, uh, receptive. You've got, it, it is known uh, for union and it tends to be more emo emotional and uh, empathic and it is, he, it, it's known for diplomacy. Uh, it balances, it helps, it is feminine as opposed to the masculine energy of the first one. It is uh, associated with the line because it goes between two points and uh, the sacral chakra, uh, which is, is down in, uh, well, just above your, your root chakra. Uh, and it, this, the color orange and the musical note D. And I don't have perfect pitch, so I'm not going to demonstrate that to you. Uh, if I had my little uh, pitch, pitch pipe, I could do it. But I, I, it's over on the piano, and I'm not going to get up and do it. Um, OK, so then once you go from 1 plus 2, you get 3. And as they said on the electric company, 3 is a magic number. Uh, it is about creativity and expression and fusion. You know, you put things together and you get something different. It is associated for some reason, I am not sure, with the Ascended Masters. It has to do with communication and sociability. It is the number of art and artists. Uh, the people who, um, who are, are threes are generally very active and they are very ambitious and uh, unlike the ones who tend to get their own way, they uh, they are a little bit more scattered, and their weakness is getting overwhelmed easily. Um, they are associated with the triangle, and the solar plexus chakra, the color yellow, and the musical note E. Uh, then you get to four. Four, G, what a surprise, is the Q, is, is, is the square. And it has to do with stability <coughs> and practicality and formation. And it also is about creation, but um, it is more of a, a stable creation. The, the uh, three creates art and music, and, and uh, whereas the four will work in wood and stone and other things that are going to hang around a little bit longer. Four is G associated with the archangels, with the directions, with the elements, with four, anything you could think of a four as, you know, four different Star Treks, or is there a five now? Um, more. <laughs> more. Way more. Uh, at one point when I was studying, it, it, we, we, there were four Star Treks and there was a, you know, which, which, you know, Captain Kirk was, was, you know, fire and Captain Picard was air and uh, mm. uh, anything, anything you can have four of, they will make into, uh, the oh, associate with the directions and the elements. So it's, uh, it, the, the handicap for um, fours is they have a tendency to be a bit rigid. Uh, and I, I would think it would, a little bit of gaming background that I, I would call them lawful. They have both the, uh, they, they are less lawful good and more lawful neutral. If, if it's law, that's all I care about. Um, and they're very self-contained so that as, well, one is very much self, the uh, four is absolutely certain that he, they are right. It's a square. It is the heart chakra. It is the color green. I think that the green must come from being associated with the chakras and the musical note F. Uh, five is for change, movement, adaptability. Uh, they are adventurous. They are curious. Their primary characteristic is they love freedom and action and experience. They are known as investigators. 
Um, they are more likely to get into trouble by uh, creating conflicts by being careless because they are too busy moving to what they're going. <laughs> and uh, so if you add up to a five, or in your case, Bill, with five fives in there, you're going to have a whole lot of experience and curiosity uh, involved in, in your life. It just can't help it. Um, the, uh, the, the Baha'i also have uh, five pointed stars and as another one of their symbols, uh, the pentagram and pentacle, of course. Um, it's associated with the throat chakra and blue and the musical note G. The, uh, the six represents love, home, family, harmony, empathy. Essentially, if you take the characteristics of two, the receptive and feminine and uh, supportive two, and then you add it to the three, uh, and, and you, you put the three and the two together, you get a six and you get nurturing, supporting. Uh, they're very responsible. You get a lot more, you, they take from the two, the need to care for and add it to the uh, fusion that, that three has. And so you get a, a lot of empathy where, you, uh, where, where it, they are deep in emotion. Uh, their handicapping condition, <coughs> uh, trying to run things, the that when they are, um, or, or sometimes they can get a little martyry. You know, just think of a um, afflicted version of a mother. The six is, is like a mother, and and there's good mothers, and then there's mothers that you just don't want to have around. <laughs> And so, so if, if six goes bad, it turns into a, a nagging mother. And uh, so basically it's Beverly Crusher, the ultimate smothering mother. I could see that. I could see <coughs> that. Or you can so for Gothel in, in, um, in, in Rapunzel. But, mm -hmm. uh, the, it, they, it, they <coughs> for, uh, six is a hexagon or the star of david uh it, it's uh, associated with the third eye chakra and the uh color indigo and the musical note a then uh the seven is which we've already mentioned is <coughs> learning wisdom understanding they very likely to have strong psychic abilities they go beyond uh things they're consciousness they are uh, known as enthusiasts and as well as intellectual intuitives and as i said their their handicap can be because they are so freaking observant they can find errors and um delight in, in pointing them out when they are afflicted uh badly the heptagon is the uh po polygon that they have and the fairy star is the seven pointed star they associated with the crown chakra, the color violet, and the musical note B. And then, unlike modern occultists, Pythagoras stopped and he said, okay, there are only seven notes, so we're not going to try and come up with a seventh note for eight. I think this is wonderful. Uh, eight, again, is, is uh, associated with a lot of power, a lot of energy. It's, it is essentially manifestation. It could be you, you get deeply into things. Another uh, symbol aside from the octagon is the cosmic lemnus gate or the infinity symbol. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is because you could, you can, you probably will be extreme whether you're going into hedonism or whether you're going to asceticism. Um, they are the challengers. They are the ones that everybody else wants to copy. Uh, their affliction is they can become too, they can become workaholics or they can become too possessive of their, their material things or they can become too possessive of their 
uh, deeply held beliefs that they think everybody else should follow them with. And, and people tend to do. They, uh, apes are incredibly uh, charismatic and appealing. Uh, and deeply associated with financial success. Uh, so uh, two concepts that when applied to me, I tend to tend to want to just go, what? <laughs> yeah, well, you, you have obviously balanced yourself off with the other parts of your uh, charts. Because uh, I'm... You, you, you know, you're not, you're not, uh, you're not extreme. You, you've managed to, you, to, to go, you have, you manifested as abundance, but you have carefully picked the abundance that you want. Whereas, you know, you say money, abundance, abundance is, abundance is one of those things that, that they used to, to do a lot of, well, let's manifest abundance and you guys, please figure out abundance of what? That's very yes. important. <laughs> Uh, yeah, really, because if your only if your only measure of value is money, yeah. you know that's one thing. But you know, what if your measure and it of could value be an abundance is of used cat litter? <laughs> yeah, so or, uh, yeah, um, or uh, sidewalk chalk. Um, you know, let so. me get to let me get to nine and ten. I'll get to nine and ten, and then we'll get to, back to your questions. Because mm -hmm. uh, nine is is about a uh, G completion ending. Mm -hmm. The manifestation, uh, fulfillment, spiritual awakening, uh, change, change, but change for the better. Uh, they are the peacemakers. They are the idealists, and their weakness is being impractical. The shape is a nonagon or enigram, the the star of uh, Goliath. Uh, occasional people will have ten for some reason, which basically is only for completion, and. Uh, so now let us address the questions that have come up. I see hands raised during the um, during the discussion. Bill, you can you remember what you were thinking yeah, about? Yeah, so actually, when you, when you first asked, them, you know, who might want to have a name analyzed, I got a little distracted there. And but when we were back in New Hampshire, I picked up something that may or may not be a spirit name, and it's tagged around with me to the point where now. You know, it's even the first, the first Gmail account I set up, and that's the name Griffin Brook. And that spun out of conversations I was having with Equanimity Joy back then, and she, who, who was the first one to propose um, that my element might be air because she read me as having my tree upside down with the roots in the air. Mm, I so that. I'm. Um, I'm really, really curious about how that name would be code because, you know, I've got my own full name, which is too much arithmetic. And <laughs> I've, that's a separate discussion, though, because I have my full given name as it's written on my birth certificate. William Lewis Kubek Jr. Now, I've always oh, hated so my middle name. Bill instead. <laughs> Apparently, appar yeah, apparently, now Lewis apparently was some no account cousin, and my father got stuck with that name, and I got stuck with dad's name because I was supposed to be born a girl and they weren't prepared. So since I was born on dad's birthday, they named me after him. So I look at, and yeah, I, I consider us identical twins more than 32 years apart to different mothers. And considering that we turned out to look alike and think alike and, you know, yeah. So I look at that and the whole full name doesn't seem like it's much worth analyzing because I don't feel that's me. You know, if, I've, if I have my ordinary political name that feels like me, it's just Bill Kubek. But... The Griffin Brook thing has always just kind of circled around me for a lot of years mm -hmm. now. You stuck with and, it for a long time. Yeah. And if I had to pick a name that wasn't my given name, my legal name, I, that was the one I'd be most curious about. Yeah. Uh, well, we could we could do that one. I, I just wanted to, let's see if I could find and we my also, notes on, on the... Um, what Ken wanted to ask. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask about 
us as a couple ah. and our names and how they mesh together. And then remember, uh -huh. Bill, the interesting trick of putting our birth dates into the uh, Octa whatever there? Oh, the, and the Octothorpe? Yeah. yeah. Fills it up, doesn't it? Interesting to put our birth dates into the Octothorpe and see what happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we've got one of everything. Except two. Oh, you, that's really yeah, cool. Two, two is yeah. missing. So you might want to you might want to see what that looks like. The and if yeah. zero, you're allowed to fill in empty spaces, we have plenty of zeros to fill in the two. Yeah, because like right. And part of what's going on with the um with with with, with numerology is you can do a lot of looking and seeing what uh, is likely to cause friction and what isn't. And, and look at looking at the balance the kind of thing is, uh, is a thing, but uh, okay. Well, I, I just, I, I'm not finding my notes on this and I wanted to, because there is a, there are specialized, um, if you care, private message me and I will look up what all those damn fives are because that is, that, 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 that's just yeah, that a is, lot that's... more than most people have. And uh, yeah, it, but really the, the, the arrows that, that oh, let's see, where are we uh, going to click on that one there? The arrows that mm -hmm. show that the... Um, that you you have nothing in the seven eight nine, and then you have mm -hmm. this pile of, of duplicates in in the uh, the straight line there. It is is a a cool thing. Let's um, and yes, of course you can do the octothorpe. In uh, they use the octothorpe for the um, birth dates as well. Mm -hmm. And I think it's cute. I I like it. Uh, it's a lot more fun. I mean, let's face it, just a bunch of, of uh, a row of, of numbers. Not very exciting. Oh, what happened? My phone has decided to. Oh. Kick I was wondering out. about the new graph. Uh, well, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think basically that was, was that the next graphic? Uh, there we go. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, there we are. Uh, yeah, let's have fun with. Okay, with, that's on a different I, screen I now for me. Battery. Okay, let's let's put your uh, birth dates in. Okay. And, uh, so, what what is your birthday? Mine is eight seven nineteen sixty. Eight seven uh, nineteen and. Uh, Six. Six. And there is, of and course, zero. no zero. Uh, and Bill, yours is? April 3rd, 1950. Okay, so four, mm -hmm. three, uh, 19, and uh, five, 50. So if we yep. did put those together, you're still missing a two, guys. Mm -hmm. That's the only we know thing that. We noticed that a long time ago. So, so if we put that away, if we, if, if we did stick them together, you would pretty much fill everything but the two, which would be mm -hmm. a, lack of, a lack of balance that would go in. Okay. But yeah, you are pretty, pretty damn balanced. Here is the only arrow in yours. Okay. And oh, okay. And you have this arrow there, but you don't have mm -hmm. any of the um, you don't you don't have any uh, of the emptiness arrows. So mm -hmm. uh, the um, one five nine arrow is the arrow of determination. You can mm -hmm. get really stubborn, <laughs> and the the uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's like when I'm struggling with a difficult problem, I go into what I call bulldozer mode, yeah. where I may be moving slowly, but, you know, don't get in my way. 
and I've got stuff that must be done. So. And, and now this, me. This one, this arrow is the arrow of ac activity. And the arrow yeah. of activity is. I have is, to always be doing. Yeah, you can't, yeah. you can't stop down. You can't slow down at all. Um, forward momentum is, is your byword. And so. Mm, okay. So when you. That sounds right. Yeah. So, well, it does because she feels like if she's not moving, moving forward, standing still is moving backwards. And yeah, at a certain level, yeah. As yeah. the Red Queen, Queen said, <coughs> you want to get anywhere. <coughs> you can get an assortment of um, different mm -hmm. things uh, from. Oh, there's there's just so many other games that numerologists play, such mm -hmm. as karmic debt. When you're adding up your name, and I'm sorry, Bill, mm -hmm. that you can't ignore your birth certificate name. You can <laughs> legally change. You can legally change. That is your destiny number, and mm -hmm. it, it well, you can true. legally change true. it. And if you legally change it, you're, it's still. You're, what you were given at birth, same as well, your Well, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that's set in stone when <coughs> you're born. What's your, what's your anniversary? February. Oh, there's our two. Oh, yeah. February. 2, 2093. Let's throw that one in. Two. Yeah, I forgot that would fill and in the gap. Two, 20, 1993. There you go. And so if you have those, if you have Bill's other ones in there, you filled up your, your Octothorpe. So yeah. there's. But by getting married. By getting married. Okay. And, and then, you know, you, that, that one has the, um, the air, this is the, uh, the arrow of the planner that uh, of careful planning mm -hmm. and or you know okay organization thing it, so all right so you, together we can plan plan well that your, your uh yours was probably a marriage of convenience as opposed to of, of fluttery romance uh you you decided intellectually that you were suited and uh am, is this wrong or right, right? Well, considering that a few years ago I learned that I am asexual. <laughs> yeah. Good to explained know. Explained an awful lot about my entire life. <laughs> but it wasn't just convenience. We we decided that we were, you know, I really liked him, he really liked me. Yeah, it, it wasn't. We would a say it was her. love even. But it just it came to, to us because we, <coughs> we met online, of course. Interesting. And I think we could not see uh, any other outcome than to be together, together. Right. For the rest of our lives. And so filling in with the anniversary, yeah, because it brings in missing elements. And it does, as we, well, as we used to say when we we're doing our SCA merchanting, as Jen came in Latin, John, it, Jean Dieu et Guillaume non venditit solus. Okay. Not, not sold, sold separately. <laughs> okay. Um, just to cover a couple more things. One is the birth, your birthday number, where you just simply use the, the month of day and uh, produce them if, if necessary, and that gives you a. Um, that, that gives you a, a key to, it, it's like the sun sign. It's not gonna give you entire horoscope, but, but it's just gonna give you an important aspect of your personality. Well, yeah. Um, right. For uh, me, that's the, 15, which goes to six. Yeah, so, so again, you get that, that family uh, nurturing, taking care of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, any nickname, any name, that you're, any common name, any pen name, that, how you present yourself shows mm -hmm. uh, who you want to be, what your boundaries and social attitudes are, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it explains your public face. Uh, While so we were still heart, living in New uh, Hampshire, 
I finally convinced my friends to call me Jen instead of Jenny. That's going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. The fact yeah, that you change, you change your name, you can't change that birth name, but you can use, you can mm -hmm. bring out mm -hmm. a part. I mean, let's face it, there's better and worse aspects of every, every part of our lives. And if you put your concentration on the ones you want, you're, you've improved things. You can mm -hmm. take right. your home address and add and change the, the letters to numbers and then add the, mm -hmm. any, whatever numbers you have in there and you get the home address and that's going to tell you what your environment is. Uh, mm -hmm. You can see how your life is going by taking the day, days and months each resonate with their numbers. Um, the zeros, the 10, 20, and 30, uh, mm. it would be a, it, it, the zero intensifies it. So it, it um, so it would be like a more intense one, a more intense two, a more intense three. Uh, and if you take your uh, attitude number, now the attitude number is your month and date, what I just told you, uh, to, you pick your own, you just take that, the uh, month and date of your birth and mm -hmm. that's your attitude. And then you add that to whatever the um, current month and date is. And that's how mm -hmm. that's going, that day is going to be going for you. Uh, hmm. If you want to uh, have a, um, your year, how's your yearly cycles that uh, you take your attitude number plus just the four numbers of the year, the current year 2021 is a num is a five so okay. you take your attitude number and add it to right now five and then you know come january it's, it's, i get 11 uh, and i get two yeah so so basically it's going to be balanced this year and then next okay. year uh, it'll be something it'll be a three so things will be starting to move again there is something called a stress number it's the only time you subtract in numerology when you're looking at how people are getting how you and a co-worker or a spouse are getting along you take one person's attitude number and you take it from the other one i assume you're going to go for the higher number uh there mm -hmm. so that you and that is the only subtraction uh thing i have found in it and before we finish up i really want to mention in um every subculture whether whether it is uh it, you know they, they had it in babylon they had numerology in greece and pharaonic and hellenic egypt they had the early christian mystic a lot of it probably because they were into kabbalah hindu they just use it the I Ching has a lot of numerology the runes have numerology uh the japanese uh everybody's got numer some kind of numerology uh, the word numerology actually only came up, it seems to have been generated by, what is her name, Dr. Julia Sutton in the, uh, in the early 20th century. She was an associate with Mrs. Dow Ballot, who was in the New Age Thought Movement, uh, let's see, probably a theosophist. Um, or Okay, yeah. Or and, an outgrowth uh, area of, or an outgrowth, yeah. or, or a competitor, and uh, yeah, they came, and they came up with the cons. People were doing numerology; they just didn't call it that. Uh, and so, mm. and then they have some. Oh, this is so cool! They have they have binary and octal and hexadecimal, <coughs> and uh, decimal, that's base uh, base twenty. Um, uh, uh types of numerology and when they say base base 20 i'm thinking cool we can we use our 20-sided our dice to to, to uh <laughs> figure something all i out. can all i can think of is when i was playing traveler and they used um i think it was hexadecimal but or they may have also used base 20. but uh you for generating have, certain uh, numbers yeah, what did the witch say to the programmer? What? That's hexadecimal. <laughs> oh. 
Crack. Anyway, but like in the angel, they, they're, there's modern Christians use angel numbers, which is uh, the angels are trying to get mm -hmm. in touch with you. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, remembering that the triple word, digits and that sort of thing. Well, an angel simply means messenger. And so this is a mm -hmm. spirit, a guardian spirit who is trying to give you one of these things and say, hey, <coughs> and it can show up. You can suddenly notice the clock when it's saying it's 11 11 or mm -hmm. you, when you uh get your you, uh you Excuse check me. out at the grocery store and it's got a lot of lovens in it or you notice that uh, you, you're passing a sign and it's got a lot of you say oh okay so i'm supposed to be getting a lot of 11 i'm, I'm supposed to be noticing 11 right now or threes mm -hmm. or fives or whatever mm -hmm. and you notice and so if if a number suddenly starts repeating on you um mm -hmm. like your pizza or chili that happens to me a lot <laughs> the, the the numbers the, not the pizza the, the the numbers then that's messages that you're supposed to be getting and so if you learn what the meanings of these are then you i mean it's otherwise the, it's like the angels are are yelling at you in a language you don't understand so if you mm -hmm. can learn and, and numerology is really you've only got like the basic nine to learn and they mm -hmm. actually make sense because if you think about it four for stability or you've got uh one plus two and two is when you have two things and they have to interact and three is mm -hmm. the fusion of those things and then you uh five it, it it builds and it makes sense the lovely thing about numerology is it does make sense and it does carry mm -hmm. over into almost any other kind of divination mm -hmm. and so it makes it really easy to uh learn those the meanings of those nine numbers and you could pick up the uh, the hints that the universe is throwing at you, if they are speaking at you in a in a language you don't understand, I'm gonna check. I I'm gonna wonder about the intelligence of your spirit guides. <laughs> so I'd wonder about the species yeah. at that point. Yeah. Well, apparently they yeah. speak they speak math. Doesn't everybody speak math when we send out the Voyager? Didn't it have yeah, a lot really. of? Yeah, I was just reminded of. Talking about numerology in the real world, everybody knows the name Toyota as a brand of car. Yes. Well, the family that founded it was named Toyota. Oh. But the family numerology, numerologist, <coughs> after asking the name, said he was more likely to succeed if he changed the spelling. Well, it seems so, to work. Yeah, I think it worked, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think that's the reason Japanese buildings don't have a fourth floor, because apparently <laughs> four is associated with death. Mm -hmm. Like we had, don't, like a lot of our skyscrapers don't have a thirteenth floor, for the same reason. Yeah, and mm -hmm. Sunset well, Park it Hospital. Yeah, it's 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 cool, um, and and no matter what. It is the associations. You get 12, it's associated with the zodiac, it's associated with the 12 apostles. Humans watch and spot patterns. That's a thing we do. That's where divination comes from. So, uh, I mean, David made that a theme in a Star Trek episode. Um, I forget the exact title of it, but Enterprise was caught in a time loop that kept dragging them in this thing called the Tycan's Rift, and the ship would oh, get okay. destroyed. Yeah. And they kept going back and forth trying to find a way to escape this. Is that and the one with the, the uh, court, poker? The poker game? Uh, yes. Yes. And that is where they kept seeing more and more threes everywhere they went. And they finally, mm -hmm. I forget who it was, realized it, looked over at Riker and realized that he had three pips on his collar. That was and that data. was a hit. That was data that, and that was like mm -hmm. his answer is the one that will save us. But you know, it's not exactly numerology, but it did point out that mm. these, this pattern to make it why so many goddamn threes. <laughs> and now I know it's to save our butts. Uh, yeah. A plot device. But uh, it is yeah, time for us to.
close mm -hmm. up and uh, yep. and, 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 and would send, send Sean off to his supper. And, Actually, uh, Sean had his supper beforehand tonight. Oh. Um, because oh, I'm no. exhausted and we had, I have a cold, as does Kathy, we ordered in. So you can go oh. straight. Oh. No, I actually, I've got to go. In a few minutes, I got to go. I got to do a blood test. So, okay, I am mm. going to remind people that the Changing Times, Changing Worlds conference will be uh, held virtually this year on Zoom, num uh, November eighth to fourteenth. Evening panels, uh, classes, and panels Monday through Friday, and all day long on the weekends with some breakout rooms. And please, if you you know check Thank check you. our. Um, Website, if you want to uh, see who's going to be speaking, we're getting the uh, classes and panels and, and speakers are, are up, are getting up there. And we please tell all your friends because everybody has is interested in some aspect of the mm -hmm. weird stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And if we can make it practical, if we can do the hands-on how-to stuff, then uh, we're all better off. So, uh, for the hands on well, next year, what? Esoteric on. Mm. If you like it, come. If you don't, send your enemies. Okay. Interesting. She may explain why it went <laughs> bloop, 